Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Stephen Ellistead. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media for great production content. In this machine tutorial, I just want to take a quick look at choke groups, but especially link groups, and how they work with pads and samples. Over the past couple tutorials, we've been working on this little kind of electro swing things, and it sounds kind of like this. <laughs> And I wanted to lay in some more melodic, interesting ideas, but I decided this is a good opportunity to demonstrate how link groups work in particular. But first I want to talk about choke groups real quick. And so I've got these assigned in some groups right now, and we can get there in the software by clicking the pad icon. So I've got these pads here, and I want to put this in choke group one as a master. So a master is in charge of the relationship between the two pads, and a slave is not. So we'll put this one in the same stroke group. So normally I can just play a note on it. But as soon as any master pad from the same group plays, it cuts this pad off. But it doesn't work the other way unless they're both masters. And then they'll cut each other off. So this can be really useful when you want to lay together different elements and you don't want them overlapping or getting in each other's way. That's a pretty straightforward process. The link thing is a little different. And so when we get over to link mode, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one as a link slave. This one is a link master. These are all in link group one. And I'll put this one in link group one as a link slave. And so what's gonna happen here is when I sound one of these that's a slave in that link group, absolutely nothing happens. When I, when I play one that's a master, it's going to sound all of them, so that you can use this to you know, double kicks, the thickened lines. A real common use is for pads, maybe to put a pluck sound, or maybe a piano sound at the very front to give it a little bit of edge in the beginning, without compromising the main envelope of the pad. But you can also use it to create some, some lines, some textured lines that give you some kind of harmonic layering, but then you can come in and also layer some other sections. So let's give it a shot here. So in this part we got let's see what we can do. And so first I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna lay a part that has several different parts in it. Quantize that, see how it sounds. Okay, now so we got a line, and because I played it on the master, it sounded all these other ones. But because these two are slaves, I can play secondary lines with them, and they're not going to also trigger that organ sound. So I can come in here. Something like that. So let's see what we can do. Cool. And now we'll come over with our other pad. And I don't even know why I had that extra one up there. And let's go ahead and do the same thing, but this time I'm going to go into note repeat. I need to put a little bit of swing on this group to make sure it matches up with everybody else. So I'll do that real quick. So let's give it a shot. I think I can live with that. Let's solo it out and see. Cool. And now uh, the nice thing about this link pads though is they're on there, but now I can balance them out sonically just using my sound levels and, and balancing it out. And there you go, pretty straightforward. Usually does a, a good bit. I'm gonna go ahead and also probably put a compressor on there just to bring them all together a little bit and solo it out.
so there you go a quick look at choke pads and link pads and how they work and how you can use them to layer things up hope you got something useful out of that i'm steven ellis that for adsr make sure you subscribe to adsr youtube channel and we'll see you next time thanks a lot and take care Thank <laughs> you.